This is some cool village in Oasis, in the mid-desert. I can hear roosters singing, village life going on. Yeah, you want to park in the shade here. You don't want to cook your car. <laughs> That's where I came from. And here, this seems to be this village's central football stadium. You can watch all the big games being played here. <laughs> nice! What a cute place! Somebody is burning something there. And these are the villagers' houses. Well, you have such an instructions when you arrive here. And it's uh, of of all the things which which were mo most of them were quite uh, obvious and normal but two things were which i was surprised one thing i shouldn't be climbing the sand hills overlooking the village would that be kind of intrusion into their privacy maybe and another thing was that i should report to somebody here who would drive me to the camp which I have reservation for <laughs> but you guys know which camp I have reservation for the hobo camp <laughs> the space in the dunes where nobody sees <laughs> oh that's cool you don't need tires hello marhaba Wow, he had a steel, what do you call it, like the old horse carts had the steel ring around the tire. <laughs> That's why he was able to, to skid over the tarmac. <laughs> yeah, so I won't report to anybody, I guess, because my reservation is very special reservation. He won't be able to drive me there. It's only myself who can go there. <laughs> Hopefully that should be okay. And yeah, I'll do my best, of course, not to disturb anybody or not to um, infringe on in anybody's property or privacy or whatever. Unless what I'm doing already could be considered infringing. Hopefully not. If yes, then then I'll just ignore it. <laughs> because I do want to show you, friends, this thing. Oh, and there's a pump. So obviously there's a borehole there where the pipe goes into the sand. Okay. So that works nicely. Look at this, my friends. It almost looks like some Mayan pyramid. And even more that one. But that's somebody's date palm grove, is it? Or something else. It looks like they're planted in the rows. And it's on the premium uh, oasis land. So I guess they should be for eating, not just for good looks. Probably they're producing dates. What a cool place! How not to like it? Life is good. <laughs> I'm grateful that I decided to go here, not to leave it out. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. I think he was asking for money, but I'm not sure. It sounds something like money, and then 
something in Arabic and then how much? <laughs> Salam. Hello. Hello. Hello, Salam. Good, good. How are you? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Oh, there are some nice houses as well. Look at these friends. Look who's there. <laughs> cool. Imagine these black goats when they have to survive the summer heat on the black coat. I'm cooking here in January, let alone what's happening in summer here. That's crazy. Here are more goats. And sheep? This looks like a sheep and that one but the others look like goats to me and yeah one more difference between camels on one hand and goats and sheep on the other hand is how they eat the camels are amazingly programmed to be very considerate about plants they never eat the whole plant they take a little bit and they go further to look for more because in that way plants will survive and grow new shoots while sheep and goat they just graze everything if there is anything edible they will eat it and leave nothing behind them in our northern european climates it's okay because you can't kill grass that way you can uh, eat forever, but grass will grow back, and it's plenty of grass. But it's not the same story here. Here, if you eat the whole bush completely, leaving nothing, it will die. While camel, he is amazingly programmed that he will pick a couple branches, couple leaves, and leave the rest and will wander further in the desert to look for another bush to pick a couple branches off so that these bushes keep growing they're just pruned they're not killed so yeah that's another reason to admire camels so much in this climate I am slowly approaching the place where the civilized village ends and the proper desert starts. You can play games in the wall as well if you have a chalk. <laughs> and these plants, these closest here, uh, I'm pretty sure they are the ones which are poisonous. From the leaves they look exactly uh, the Latin name is euphorbia euphorbia but uh, I don't know the species names the specific name just the genus name because there are many different kinds but they're all poisonous and if I understand correctly you can even get blind if you get that juice in your eye Ah, uh, there is one cool thing happening. I don't know, can I show you? There is one jeep trying to get up the dune and couldn't. Crazy people having fun. <laughs> this place is amazing. Uh, that's the drinking water tap. The communal one. With a filter. Oh, that's cool. I have enough water, but in case I need more, I know where to go. That's a cool stuff. Who would think that they would have free drinking water dispenser here? So friends, no tarmac from this point on. For however long you would want to wander, you wouldn't see 
anything more like any roads more this is the last the tarmac finished there Salam. Yeah, they have a lot of Indian, Pakistani and Bangladeshi workers here loads of loads of them and even when I was looking for that bus station I, I was wandering through the huge huge bus yard um, <laughs> through their petrol station and all, all kind of inner places which I shouldn't be probably going into but I couldn't find the bus station and everybody inside spoke only Bangladeshi Bangla, Bangla, the language they were from Bangladesh Salam alaikum Cave Halek Alhamdulillah Well, sometimes I can make the whole conversation in Arabic <laughs> but only when that consists of Peace be with you, which is hello How are you? and praise to God, which is all good <laughs> Salam, Salam <laughs> Ah, shwaya, shwaya <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> uh, just walking to the desert <laughs> Shukran, shukran <laughs> How are yourselves? All good? Uh, can you say in English? Sorry? Where you go? I just walked to the desert and back. You sleep no no? Uh in the desert. One night and then back tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have. Good. <laughs> shukran, shukran. Sorry? Ah, Ismak, name, uh, Artis. My name is Artis. Yeah. Where and? Your name Muhammad. Muhammad, okay. Abudi Shagran. Abudi. Shagran. Shagran. Fahad. Fahad? Farenzi. Farenzi. Yeah. <laughs> cool, cool. <laughs> Latvia, Europe. <laughs> shukran, shukran. Bye. Have a good day, bye bye. That's the local mosque. Yeah, there were some cool local dudes who just wanted to have a chat with somebody from outside and just wanted to welcome me to Oman. They didn't try to sell me anything, they didn't try to get money from me, they didn't try anything. Just to, to smile and say hello and ask which country I'm from and what's my name and what's their names and welcome to Oman what a nice country I read an airport in uh, Muscat airport they had a huge quotation on the wall where Muhammad once had said that if you come to Oman they will never embarrass you and never mistreat you I forgot the exact wording but something of that sort so that Oman is a very nice place and welcoming that was the main idea so the old Muhammad said it already and it hasn't changed it's still nice welcoming and wonderful country what do you think? <laughs> that's at least my impressions this far now these are the last houses from the satellite imagery it looked to me that many of the houses are abundant because the yards were half filled with sand and so on but it doesn't seem to be the case nothing seems to be abandoned here everything seems to be inhabited and in good condition 
So, my idea about sleeping into some abandoned yard will probably have to be discarded. <laughs> there are no such thing. And these are the last houses. 